Inflation can be a result of cost pressures or demand pressures. We've gone through this before in the lesson on macroeconomic equilibrium, so we'll briefly touch on it here. When the cost of an important factor of production, such as labour or energy, increases, the short-run aggregate supply curve of the economy is shifted to the left. At the new short-run equilibrium, output is lower but price is higher. If the central bank opts to stimulate aggregate demand so output returns to its long-run potential, the result would be a further increase in the price level. This is known as cost-push inflation because it's brought about by increase in costs of production to the producers. The most prevalent source of cost-push inflation is the pressures caused by increase in wages. Analysts have several ways to study wage pressures. The most straightforward is to look at the unemployment rate. The lower the unemployment rate, the higher the pressure on wages. However, most analysts acknowledge that the unemployment rate may not be the most effective indicator of wage pressures. Factors such as job skills mismatch, cultural patterns that despise certain jobs, and inefficiencies in the labour market can mean the economy is facing labour shortages even though the unemployment rate is not that low. A better indicator that encompasses these aspects of the labour market is the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, or the natural rate of unemployment. You do not need to know how they're determined, but just to be aware that they can be better indicators of wage pressures, which is a major factor of cost-push inflation. Besides Nairu or Naru, analysts can use data on labour productivity to identify signs of potential wage pressure. Wage increases are not inflationary as long as they remain in line with gains in productivity. A useful indicator of wages and benefits in terms of productivity is unit labour costs, the ratio of total labour compensation per hour to output units per hour. An additional source of wage pressure is expected inflation. If workers expect inflation to increase, they will increase their wage demands accordingly. One indicator analysts use to gauge expected inflation is the difference in yield between inflation-indexed bonds, such as Treasury inflation-protected securities, and otherwise similar non-indexed bonds. When prices rise as a result of demand pressures, it's called demand-pull inflation. The increased demand is usually a result of an increase in the money supply or increased government spending. When this happens, the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. At this new short-run equilibrium, both the output and price levels are higher. With real GDP above its full employment level, the increase in GDP is not sustainable. Unemployment falls below its natural rate, which puts upward pressure on real wages and input prices. Rising cost of production results in a decrease in short-run aggregate supply until real GDP reverts back to full employment GDP. Although output falls back to full employment GDP, the price level is now even higher. However, if the central bank continues to increase the rate of money supply, this cycle is set to continue, raising price levels in an upward spiral. To measure the potential for demand pull inflation in an economy, economists often study the capacity utilisation rate of key industries. High rates of capacity utilisation suggest that the economy is producing above potential GDP and may experience inflationary pressure. The key difference between demand pull and cost push effects is the impact on output. The demand pull effect increases GDP above full employment GDP, while the cost push effect decreases GDP, resulting in higher short term unemployment. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.